Hey, it's the Bruins Benders Podcast, Season 3, Episode 15, Streaking. And it's with Maddie and Smitty, brought to you on the Inside the Rink Podcast Network. InsideTheRink.com is your one-stop shop for all your NHL and ECHL, PWHL, AHL, every HL. <laughs> Inside in analysis, follow on X at Inside underscore the underscore rink. Download the Inside the Rink app. To get extensive Bruins coverage and watch us on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Smitty is going to tell you how to sign up for ESPN+. Plus. Yeah, you can go to InsideTheRink.com slash ESPN+, and sign up today. I have ESPN+. Plus. I love all the college sports, UFC, and NHL hockey. So sign up for ESPN+, Plus at InsideTheRink.com slash ESPN, uh, and uh, do it today, you know, so you don't miss any of those NHL games. Now's the yeah, time to do, do it. it. Today. Do it today. Do it today. You, know today. You, you know what else you can do? You can go watch watch games with your own two eyes uh, through Ticketmaster, and you can do it right through us at InsideTheRink.com. I think look that's a, a great QR idea. Code action. Yeah, look at the little QR code action. Yeah, and you can, you right can just hit that bad boy right there, and and we'll throw you know throw a little bit of cookies at us, or whatever the hell they call it in the business. <laughs> Yeah, I'm all about cookies. I like me some cookies. Oh, yeah. So, What's your uh, favorite kind of that. cookie, by the My way? My favorite cookie, I'll tell you right now. When I was a kid, Archway Dutch Cocoa were okay. you know those Archway cookies. Yeah, the Archway, that, the the molasses and all that. They had these, yeah. yes, they had these big Dutch Cocoa ones. I used yeah. to love those. But I'll tell you what, a double stuffed Milano, don't hate it. Yeah. I don't hate double, it. Double yeah. chocolate milk. Milk, uh, double milk yeah. chocolate Milanos. I'm a big fan of those. You know what else I love? The Oreo thins, the Ooh. the yellow yellow yeah. Oreo thin with the lemon. I'm a big Ooh, fan of those. lemon. I big lemon. Yeah. Go down a row of those without any oh, trouble at all. Oh, and I'll tell you what. A, a, a fudge. What are those fudge? Uh, what are those El Yo, fudge, fudge with the? Oh yeah, yeah with the yeah, chocolate fudge. in the middle. I love those. Yeah, those are you know good. Else, and... uh, a good old raspberry pillow cookie from the old oh. stuff. <laughs> throw down hey, about four million of those things i worked at the bake shop there years ago and i used yeah. to they used to lose money on me <laughs> lose profit because i used to eat i used to throw them throw them on the ground quotation fingers yeah. drop a them. tray yeah. <laughs> right, right, right right five Whoops. second rule yeah Sure. I'll have to eat all of these 36 cookies that I just dropped uh, on the ground. Yeah, that's a shame. Accidentally on purpose. Crying, crying shame. Yep. Uh, yeah, so so do all those good things. Hey, rapid review. We haven't been around in three or four weeks, but hey, let's go through some of these things. Since since, okay. the, th since the three OT losses in a row, which was a yep. tough little stretch, yep. Bruins have won five in a row and over some good teams. Devils, Avalanche, Jets, and they crush Montreal nine to four in the process. Uh, the the rivalry is not very much alive at all, you know, basically yeah. because the Canadians aren't very good. Yeah. But that was a that was a good little ass whooping to Montreal. Yeah, that was fun. I I enjoyed the hell out of that one. Dan Heinen with his first hat trick in that game, right? Oh, in, yeah, four hundred and fifty games or something. First yeah, NHL hat trick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was cool. You know, we had some other milestones. Pavel Zaka yeah. during the stretch scored his hundredth career goal. Mm -hmm. Charlie Coyle yeah. had his seventy third, I believe, as a Boston mm -hmm. Bruin, which uh, you know uh, was. I don't know what that was. Some kind of record. <laughs> it was 73 being a milestone. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why 73 Absolutely. was a big deal, but it was. Uh, yeah. I yeah. don't know if it was like he, he passed what he scored with the wild. I have no idea Maybe. what it was, but yeah. some kind of he tied somebody Maybe. somewhere down the line. Mm -hmm. uh, but he had some kind of a milestone. So uh, Pasta had his, what, 16th? Patrick too in this little stretch. Yeah, he had his thirtieth goal, and then Martian had his twentieth for eleven yeah. eleven years now. Twenty goals. Right. Yeah, he's the all time leading uh, consecutive twenty goal seasons in Bruins yes. history Bruins now. History. Yes. Ask Bergeron and Busick. Yeah. For that, so uh, impressive. I have to imagine sixty three is going up into the rafters. At some no point. doubt. I think there's no doubt that sixty three, thirty three, and thirty seven are going. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think those are the next three for sure. And Not 63, order, you know, if he keeps this, keeps this up is going to end up in the, in the HOF too. I, I think. Sure. I think if you get a couple, you know, I don't know how long he'll play. I mean, he has one more year in the contract, but if he does go one year deals out for another couple more years after that, at this rate, I mean, he's still almost a point per game player. I mean, he's still right there. Yeah. Uh, he just, he just so. passed what? 900 career points. Yeah. Right? 
nine hundred career points. So yeah, he gets over a thousand points probably, yeah, uh, without much problem if he keeps playing uh, injury free. And then yeah, then he's then he's I think he's in. I mean, you know, 11, 11 straight seasons of twenty plus goals. I think he's in. I don't think I don't think there's any question. Won a cup. I mean, all the things you can't. You know, I don't. I mean, the only thing is, is his, his individual milestones. I mean, he's not hasn't won any real awards or or such. But um, I don't know. I think no. he, and, and and he I, hasn't, he hasn't well, really made all star games either. No, right. Because of his reputation. But I think yeah. you know, if you ask people around the league who was, you know, the best left wing in the league, you know, or one of the two or three best left wings in the league for the last you know handful of years, his name would be there. It so sure I, would. So yeah. I think, you know, when you talk talk about the top players in the game mm -hmm. during their era, he's certainly one of them. Yes. I mean, he's definitely there. So I, I think he does. Boy, it, it, if you're Alexander Mogilny, you get even more pissed. But, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean my God. That's, that to me is a trap. Yeah. They have something against Russian guys for some reason. They do. Something's going um, on there. Yeah. But, uh, he should definitely be in. I mean, rookie record, right? Uh, in goals. Yeah. Are, it's 76. Uh, 76. Uh, yeah, he had, he had maybe over it was a rookie points. record. Solani set the rookie record, right? Solani, he just he just scored 76. He scored 76. Solani had yeah. 76 for the rookie record, right? Right. I think they both had the same, but Jesus, yeah. I mean, McGillney was just unbelievable. Uh, but you're right. Maybe, maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Um, so yeah, so this has been a great stretch for for the Bruins, and uh they won five in a row and they've gotten through a couple little blips. And starting to get guys back from injury and, you know, fairly healthy now. We'll talk about what that might mean for the roster in just a bit. But right now, Seven Chirps are sponsored by Lops Brewing. Lops are brewing in tasting room in downtown Woonsocket, Rhode Island, specializing in small batch ales and lagers. Use the coupon code SPORTS to get 10% off your online order at lopsbrewing.com and follow them at Lops Brewing on social media for new beers and events. Chirp number one, should the NHL go to the three-point system they're using in the PWHL, which is three points for a win, two points for an OT win, and one point for an OT loss? I think they should. I mean, mm -hmm. it would screw up all the pre-past records, which right. is probably why they're not doing it. Mm -hmm. But I think it would, it, would, it would force teams to not play for overtime and play for ties, you know, if you – you know, if you're playing for an extra point there, it could be very important come playoff time. You're going to have teams trying to win in regulation uh, at the end of games. You're going to have teams in overtime trying to win instead of holding and holding and holding and holding and 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 trying to, uh, you know, delay it and and not have as much action as you would otherwise, I think, because you, you know, you gain the extra point if you're if you're attacking and trying to win games. So. I, I really do think that it's something that they should look to change. I think it just puts more value on wins, which I think you should have. I mean, if a, yeah. if a team has 12 overtime losses, they right. shouldn't be able to surpass a team that has more wins than they do. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other thing to do, if you don't want to do that, is just to take away the the extra point when you get into overtime. Like, don't give the extra point till you get to the shootout. Like, give it, make it right through to right through the overtime, and see if you can just keep. You know, don't well, give see, people I, a point. Yeah, if if you're gonna if you're gonna take away the point in OT, you got to just take it away because you can't say, oh yeah, you can have it once we get to the shootout because then teams will just sit behind their own net yeah, or sit behind the net, pull, yeah, and not pull, play. Or, yeah, and and right. not play. So yeah, so I guess to, the extra point is the way to go. Yeah, you I have to incentivize right. them to actually try to play and win. Um, but I don't have a problem if you want to keep it at two points, and then once if you get to OT and you lose, that's it, you lost. That's it, you lost. Yeah. See you later. You lost. So yeah, you plain and simple. Too, still I'm have fine. the shootout, still have everything, but you lost. Yeah. But if yeah. you lose, you lose. That's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah. I so like I'm fine with that too. But um, I, I like the three point system. You know, you want to, I think, reward teams that get to overtime and, and so forth. And you don't want to shoot out, you know, deciding whether a team does it or doesn't make the playoffs, you know, if they don't get points, you know, if they did the thing where they didn't award the points and then you take it to a shootout and those right. teams continually lose. Right, you know, and then you don't make it to the playoffs because you lost in the shootout, you know, six times right. or something. Yeah. So, well, that wouldn't uh, help the Bruins, <laughs> no, because they aren't great in the OT and they aren't great in the, you know, no. they're even better in the shootout, but they aren't. I yeah. mean, they aren't great in that whole thing, you know. No. That's, so that wouldn't help a team like the Bruins at all. 
Like no. they, I think they survived. They're one of the teams that survives by, by the whole shootout and OT mm-hmm. system, to be honest. But yeah, uh, so we might be, uh, you know, shooting our face to spite our hands or whatever it is, <laughs> biting your hand to spite your nose. Or, yeah, one of those. Uh, so I anyway, yes, spiting and hitting and biting. And uh, chirp number two, Jim Montgomery says this: Last year, I could have fallen asleep behind the bench and been nominated for the All Star game, but this year we'd had to grind. We're a lot simpler team this year. He credits his staff for their video work and the way they've all adapted. Does the coaching staff deserve more credit uh, for this? The success they have this year, which is fairly comparable to last year after losing two extremely key players. I think they do deserve more credit. Absolutely. I think they've adapted the way that they play a little bit. I think they're, uh, you know, they're trying to play a little bit of a simpler game. It's shown, especially after Christmas, um, right. you know, they really kind of the Martians and the Pasternak's of the world, they still will, you know, make the turnovers that madden you and, and drive you crazy. But it's, they're far less often. It's, it's much more get the puck down low and focus on the four check and try to create turnovers and offense that way. They're not being as loose with the puck uh, in their own zone and in the neutral zone to lead to odd man rushes the other way. And I think that's certainly helped them. They've turned their defense into offense. I think after, since Christmas, they're the highest scoring team in the league. I'm, I'm almost positive of that mm-hmm. uh so they they really have kind of turned it on um and found their game here lately and i think it, it does you know the coaches do deserve a lot of credit for that yeah they do and i i don't think they get enough um probably because it was a i mean this has been a really good season for a team that some people thought you know would kind of be middle of the pack or maybe even struggle to get into the playoffs if yeah. certain things didn't go well so for them to be in the top of the Eastern Conference and and riding high right now is really a credit to like like Monty says the the, the coaching staff and the video work and and being able to simplify and change their game some. Whereas last year they were offensive juggernaut, blowing teams out a lot. And this this last stretch here they've been much better offensively, which I don't know where it came from, but uh, they were they were being a little bit one dimensional one dimensional for a while this season. They've been better lately, but they've really changed kind of the way they play. Um, and they are still an excellent team. I and mean, they're still doing really, really well. So they do deserve a lot of credit. Um, all right, Chirp, number three, yay or nay? And I'm going to give you this one and then a bonus. Okay. Yay or nay oh. on Anaheim Ducks uh, player Trevor Zegris. Uh, I would say... Nay. Nay on Zegris. Okay. I would say nay because I think he's um I'm obviously he's picked higher and he's done more at the professional level than Patra has, but he's a similar player, I think, to Patra. Okay. And I don't I'm not sure what you would have to give up to get him. It would be a lot, I think. It would be. Yeah. So it would be. I'm not gonna give up, you know, Patra and Low Rai and a first. To, to get this guy when I think you may have a guy, he may not ever get to the level of Zeg- of Zegris, but a uh-huh. similar style guy in Patra, I think. Um, and Patra may play a better 200 foot game already than Zegris. Yeah. Uh, so, and that's something that the Bruins value. So yes. I would say um, I'm out on Zegris because I don't think he's, the type of guy that you are looking for in a center uh, yeah. at this time. Well, I'll tell you this: he's he's six foot one eighty five. So you're so you're right; he's right around maybe a little, uh, just a little bit bigger than Patra. He was a ninth, ninth overall pick in two thousand nineteen. He is in the last three seasons, the last two and a half seasons, a combined minus fifty. So there's there's one strike mm-hmm. against as you said and then he has four goals and three assists in 20 games he's been dinged up here and there it hasn't been a great season for him uh sort of been uneven he has scored 23 goals in each of the last two seasons and has had 60 plus points in those two seasons he's very skilled and gifted uh 
Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you're right. I think the return right now, this is a sell low kind of pr proposition for the ducks. Like he, his numbers don't equal his value right now. Mm -hmm. So teams are probably going to want to get a little bit better return or a little less return. And they're going to want to get a really high return. And I just don't think it's going to match up unless some team really takes a leap of faith with them. Like and a leap good, of faith. Yeah. He's not you a know? great face off guy either. So no, that's, that's right. another thing, you know, that the Bruins kind of value that, that, uh, you know, Patra obviously was good early in the year and, and has tailed off and now they have him playing some wing a right. little bit. Uh, so, right. you know, it, there's, there's just some factors there that, that I don't think he's the type of guy that they would want in a center. Uh, I think, you know, obviously Calgary's Elias Lindholm would be a better fit for the Bruins cause he plays a 200 foot game and he produces points. Uh, so, you know, I feel like that would be, <clears throat> if you're going to give up a bunch of assets to get a guy, I would rather have them do it with him. Um, or just sign him in free agency. He's a free agent, right? After this year. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, that could be the well, other thing. People just waiting for him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. why would you give up a ton now? Um, you know, if he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year anyway. Right. So, I mean, uh, so you, you wouldn't do like, well, let's just play the game. You wouldn't do like Patra Bussy something for him. For Zegris? Right. No, no, <laughs> I wouldn't. Yeah. Right. I wouldn't. I, I just, I, I just don't think there's enough there. I mean, he, he is offensively gifted. That's for sure. Uh, right. But I just don't know if he's, you know, a playoff type of guy, honestly. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't fit the model of, of the Bruins uh, just because of the way he plays. I mean, I, I almost envision him as, as Tyler Bertuzzi, you know, like, not the grit and not the other intangibles, the edge and the, and that type of thing. Uh, he not, not sort of the personality that, that Bertuzzi brings to the thing, but they're kind of similar in that they're not great defensively. They'll probably put up the same type of points. Uh, they'll do the same sort of, you know, talented things on the ice. They'll, they'll have a couple highlights that are really cool. But at the end of the day, I mean, how much do they really fulfill all do they check all the boxes for you? Um, I think that that's probably the same kind of boat. And also a guy that's been injured. Yeah. Um, you know, and that type of thing, just like Bertuzzi. So I think that's that's another maybe comparable again, minus the minus the fact that Bertuzzi will get in your face and be a little edgy and stuff like that. But um yeah, I mean Zegris is really talented, and I and I really like him, and I I liked him yeah. when he came right into the league, and now it seems like his stock is really falling, and I wonder how much he'll rebound, and he could go to a team like Toronto or somewhere, and just friggin' blossom off the charts. Yeah, I mean, you know he, I mean, I mean that the offensive talent is there, one hundred percent, and he's you know in his first couple of years putting up sixty point seasons yeah. is nothing to sneeze at but no. um so i i love the offensive talent it's just can he round out the rest of his game and maybe he would do that here you know yeah. on the, you know in this culture rather than in a culture like anaheim where you know they're not really used to winning and and that that kind of thing you know maybe the the leaders here hold him accountable um more defensively and and whatnot and he he performs better um but i i just i don't i don't think he's a great fit for the team. Um, but you know, I, I really do love his game and his, and his offensive talent and skill. Yeah. All right. Bonus. Yay or nay. How about this Russian guy, Maxime Siplikov mm. in the KHL? I guess no, so, are in on it. Uh, that I would be for, because I, I don't think it's really just signing him to a contract, right? It's not, you know, right. you don't have to just trade. Him. Him. Yeah. And yeah. the Bruins need, you know, the more good players you can get, the better. So if you're right. not sending anybody out to get them, I'm all for bringing in somebody with talent. Yeah. Uh, so, so for me, that's an easy one that I'm, I'm in Bring in, bring in all the guys that can, that can play and can score. Um, and it, especially if you don't have to give up anything in return. 
Yeah, I mean, this guy is 29 goals this year in a breakout year at 25 years old. He's a pure scorer. He only has 12 assists, but he's a pure kind of wing scorer. Um, he had a four goal night the other night. He's really blossomed this year. And some teams are in the market for him. It seems as though he wants to come over. Um, so if he can, you know, I don't know what kind of contract it would be. I don't know if for the Bruins or any team for that matter. With limited cast space, probably a bonus structure of that type of thing. Who knows? That would be the smart way to do it, uh, incentive based. But you know, like you said, if he's a guy who can come over, I don't know what he can do defensively. I don't know two hundred foot game and all that stuff. The Bruins like and value. I don't know uh, about that. And again, this is a one year kind of thing for him where he's really busted out at twenty five years old this year. Mm-hmm. How that translates into the NHL, no idea. Mm-hmm. So if he's comes over and he's Jaco Blauco, or if he comes over and he's he's a guy who can who can actually play, is he Marius Tchaikovsky or is he uh, you know Grigory Pantaleev? I have no idea. I have no idea. So you know, I give it a shot if you think it doesn't hamstring you. If you if you're not going to put a ton of resources into it, and you can just take a flyer and see if he can either help you this year or help you next year. You know, maybe, you know, if he can adapt to the NHL game. So I'm with you on that one. It's less risk than Zegras or someone like that. Uh, Chirp four is Linus. Linus Almark got hurt recently. He's back now. But has Jeremy Swayman proven he can handle the workload of a number one goalie? And are you okay with that? Giving him the deal he's going to deserve and moving on with him? Yes, I am. Yes, yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. I think he's still young. He's, uh, I saw somebody tweet out the other day, um, Jeremy Swayman's first, whatever, 100 games or 75 games, and Martin Brodeur's first 100 games. Hmm. Did you see this? And Mark Flurry's first 100 games. No, but I'm so excited about it. Swayman Swayman is extremely favorable. Really? Compared to two of the all time greats. Uh, Yeah. In their first wow. hundred games. Now, granted, you know, defensive structure and you know the way the league is now sure. versus the way it was then, right. goalie right. pads, that whole thing is different. Yeah. Um, but he's but held no up one else really has done well. it. No, <laughs> and no, yeah. yeah. So, right. so. Um, he, I I think he can do it. I mean, right. they played him five in a row, I believe, when mm-hmm. Allmark went out and he acquitted himself pretty well. Yeah. Um, you know, whether that can last over a whole season, the only way that you will know that is if he does it. Right. So, um, you know, and I don't have any problem with Brandon Bussey being a backup that plays, you know, 25 games uh, and, and Swayman gets the rest. So I, I think, you know, after this year, I think you're looking to move on from Allmark to save a little bit of money there. You're paying Swayman his, you know, six times six or whatever it is and bringing Busty in on a short, you know, money deal Mm -hmm. and saving some tap room and, and, you know, having Swayman be a guy. I mean, there's no reason that he couldn't do it when, you know, Connor Hubbuck's doing it and there's other guys around the league that, that can do it. So I feel like he's, uh, he's definitely, um, kind of shown that, uh, it might be his time now. I think you can you can you can probably keep the two of them through next season. Sure, you can. could. Yeah. You can. But is that a smart thing to do because you're going to end up losing Allmark in free agency for nothing if that it happens. Isn't. You know. It isn't so a it's smart. Not. It, it's so not you a smart. deal them in, in the off season. You yeah. I mean you deal them in the off season. Yes. Without a doubt. I, mean, I don't think do. there's any any chance you don't. Yeah, I mean if you want to get a return for the guy I mean, there's so many teams around the league that need goaltending. Oh my God, yeah. Like, why? Yeah. I I don't understand why you wouldn't entertain it. I mean, right. I I understand that you're in love with this tandem and they hug each other and everybody loves each other and that's great and they both yeah. play really well and they're both together. One of the huge reasons that this team is where they are right now. I understand right. all that, but you if if you have faith in Jeremy Swayman. Then you can you you think he, that he should be able to do this over a larger sample sample size, right. and and Brandon Bussy or Mike B. D. Pietro, both of those guys are having pretty good years down in the AHL. So mm-hmm. one of those guys playing twenty something games in this system 
I think would be fine. Yeah. You might not get the level that you're getting with the two guys you have now, but a really, really good Jeremy Swayman. And one of those guys is a backup. And then you save yourself a couple million bucks and are able to go out and get, you know, another top nine forward that can score or, you know, a slightly better defenseman on the back end because you can pay him three or four million instead of two million. You know, that's a win in my opinion. So right. I, I feel like you have to consider dealing all mark after the after the season's over to get some kind of return for him. It it would I, be dumb not to. It would be malpractice not to. And I think that if he does well in the playoffs, like if they rotate the goalies, he does well. That's the best case scenario. If he doesn't do well, if he if he has a third year in a row where he kind of you know has a clunker, that's gonna make it that's the, the then you really have to question the value of him more. Mm -hmm. So that that's what I'm concerned about is that he's got to he's got to play well um, this off this postseason. I'll mark because then you can sell fairly high on him and say, OK, this guy's legitimate. Number one in, in a team like who I don't name one Edmonton, Colorado, whoever, like teams that really have a good team, but goaltending might be holding them back or some team that falls in their face because of their goaltending. New Jersey the, Devils. This year. Devils. Devils. Perfect example. Like Carolina so, has a bunch of injuries. Right. Goal. I mean, there's teams out there that would be looking for goalies. Uh, right. so, uh, especially if he backs up, you know, a Vezina season with another really good season this year. And then, like you said, performs in the playoffs, right. you know, and the Bruins win a round or two, you know, I feel like that's the time, you know, sell that's high. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I kind of feel like that's a no brainer. You know, so why I, do I feel like they're going to keep them and they're just going to lose the agency? They will. <laughs> I just feel like they are because that's they, they like to hug each other. Like, you that's know what I mean? What like, I just feel like it's the safe thing to do and and we'll lose him after next season, but we've got Bussy and you know, it's, it, it's okay. Like you, we're, we're just going to plug Bussy in. So we're not really losing much. Yeah. You're losing a, a quality number one goaltender for nothing. Yeah. That's yeah, what you're I mean, doing. That's the thing. Yeah, sure. You keep him after next year. Uh, his money comes off the books. You know, you have the money to spend now and you plug Bussy in. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, but you lose the chance to add more value yes. to your team, especially, yes. especially when you don't have any goddamn draft picks because you already gave them all away. Right. So to, to be able to add maybe a first round pick, I don't right. know what they can get a first round of form or a second right. or a right. couple of seconds, whatever it uh, is. Right. Any kind of thing that you can add to that cupboard that's barren right now, you uh, need to consider that. So yes, you do. So that they really, it's like a no brainer in my opinion that you, that you entertain it. Now, if you can just, if like a fifth is the best you can do, I don't think you do it. That's, there's right. no value there. Right. If you can get, you know, a third and a second or a couple of seconds or yeah. a second and a player, right. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. If you can get a, like, like a, a quality defenseman in a second or sure. uh, whatever, I, mean, I don't mm -hmm. know, just name something. I don't know. Second and a third or whatever. Yeah. Then I say two seconds, well, whatever I, I, then I, yes, then I do it because you can a replenish your system, your drafting, mm -hmm. or you can get a guy that you can use going forward. So, you know, that's a, uh, that's, that's a big deal. So it looks like right here on YouTube, our, uh, you know, high end producer. Put this uh, into perspective. Whatever. I flubbed this. I was just trying to share the screen earlier to make it easy, but it didn't work right, so I just yeah, I pulled a clip dizzy. of this. But yeah. uh, I saw this this morning when I scrolled through Twitter, and it made me chuckle because the New Jersey Devils are an absolute dumpster fire in the standings right now. But because Vitek Vanacek plays more than other goaltenders in the league, this yo-yo, Vinny Parise, mm -hmm. if you listen to this, you're a yo-yo, yeah. yeah. is bragging that Vanacek has more wins than Jeremy Swayman, Sorokin, Olmark, Ottinger, and Vasilevsky. Right. Now, well, I was going to scroll more. through the comments so you could no. giggle at some of them, but you won't be able to see. Yeah, I mean, you could, he plays more, so yeah. But, uh, you know, and I Vasilevsky wouldn't say that he's... Vasilevsky was hurt for um, yeah. 
portion of the year too. Him and Elmark essentially play half half. half Vitek Vanacek has a three two eight goals against average yeah. and an eight eighty three save percentage. Yeah, wow. So you can wow. take that and shove it up your asshole. Right. right, right. <laughs> I mean, I picked the Devils to win the cup, and Vitek Vanacek is the reason I will lose it. <laughs> like he's the reason. <laughs> like that's not that's that sucks. I mean, yeah, they need a goaltender big time. Yeah, now, I don't know if the Bruins would trade Elmark to, you know, an Eastern Conference contender to make them better. Yeah, and their other goalie, uh, Nigel Dawes, I believe Nico yeah. Dawes is Nigel seven, Dawes. <laughs> seven yeah. three with a three nineteen goals against and a uh -huh. nine oh three save percentage in right. seven games. Yeah. So Vanacek's played 27 games. That's why he has 16 wins. He's 16, yeah. 7, and 2. Yeah. So that the means that falling here. apart with injuries and get out of here with, it, with the 88 save percentage. Get yeah. out of here with Bruins that. Bruins have dusted them a couple of times. They played them. So, uh, oh well. Five, chart five. Who should be the odd man out in the decor if everyone is healthy? Who's your Who's your six? Uh, give me your pairs. Uh, it is. Uh, Let's see. Uh Low Rai, McAvoy, uh -huh. uh Lindholm, Carlo. Yeah. Uh Watherspoon, Shattenkirk. I you know what? I'm with you. One hundred percent. That group right there and Watherspoon is kind of the the surprise wild card there because I never thought we'd get anything out of him. But yes, I'm with you on that. I think over four board Grizzlick. Um, those are the I, two I, think, I, and yeah, I, I think that I think you're right I, I would go with that group you just said right there I would they won't, they won't. but I would I, I, I mean absolutely tonight would. for the in the Canes game uh, Watherspoon out Shattenkirk in mm -hmm. Shattenkirk in and Forbort stays in Forbort's been oh my god how wow. about and I tweeted this out I he his first shift was a Complete handcuffing pass up the right side to someone. Maybe it was Pasternak or someone. Just handcuffed and puck exploded. It was awful. And then he gets the puck toward the left of the goaltender and literally shoots it to the goaltender. Like almost like shoots it in. Like that's his first shift. And I put out there like those two things. I was like, go Bruins. Like this is like, <laughs> I mean, I mean look, my God. I mean, I understand the guy's rusty. All right. I do. Oh my God. I understand that he's rusty. But he has not been good. He hasn't been. No, no. He hasn't and, been. No. And we talked about it before. And I think Wallace gives you every bit of what Forbrook gives you. With an any, and he seems to be even maybe a little more nasty in front of his own net. Wallace uh -huh. and Forbrook. Uh -huh. uh, you know, maybe he's not the penalty killer because he doesn't have the same experience that Forbrook does there. Um, but you have a really good penalty kill anyway. And I don't think you know. Derek Forbort is changing your penalty kill from a, you know, yeah. from a middle 10 to a top 10. Like it's not that big of a difference to me. No. And then Grizzly has been all year has been below average. I would say yes. uh, lately he's been better lately yeah. the last, you know, couple, two, three games. Um, but prior to that, he's, I mean, he just hasn't been, I mean, I know he's coming off injury and so forth, but you know, it's the same stuff over and over again. You know, he doesn't want to get hit. So he's, you know, pushing the puck through and jumping out of the way, or he's making a pass where he's trying to get rid of it before someone's really bearing down on him. And it only, that only gets, those things only are heightened during the playoffs. Right. So it's, it's more magnified than when, He's trying to get out of the way of getting hit or getting run. And it's, you know, in the playoffs, every single time you go back to retrieve a puck, you get hit. And, right. you know, after a while, that wears you down. And so he'll end up with it, a little ding, an injury or whatever, and he'll be less effective. So to me, you go with Shattenkirk. He has experience. He knows how to get pucks through. He's not the fastest guy, certainly. But he has poise with the puck that I think they – can use back there that a lot of other guys don't seem to have. Like he just, he doesn't get rattled because he's been around so much. Um, and he's not great by any stretch of the imagination, but he's a right shot defenseman, which they don't have a lot of. Now, if you're going to tell me they're going to pick someone else up at the deadline, that's better than Shattenkirk to play, you know, third pair right side. Great. Great. I'm in. 
But right. until that point, I'm riding with Wallerspoon and Shattenkirk. I'm yeah, like, I, you know, honestly, I don't know if you can get someone better than Shattenkirk there. I mean, he's he's a he's a former top twenty defenseman in the league, and he's a third pair, so he's going to play twelve minutes or whatever. Yep. And he's been totally fine, in my sure. opinion, this season. In fact, at times better than I thought. So, who are you going to get? That's going to be better than Shattenkirk, who's a veteran, who's been there before, who's played in big games, who's played deep in playoffs. I I say that that he is fine. It's Watherspoon that, yeah, I mean, he could fall off the map anytime. Sure he could. Yeah. So maybe someone there. The problem is with Gr- Grizzly and Forward is the value that they bring. Is it that much higher than the weaknesses that they bring to make it worth playing them? If you know what I'm saying. So yeah. if it's like as four boards penalty kill acumen that much greater than the fact he can't skate very well. He's a he's just a mess with the puck like oh, and those types of things. Like, is it that is it that valuable that you live with the other stuff? Same with Grizzly. For years, we've been saying, well, Grizzly has a capability of being pretty good offensively, but he never puts any any points up. <laughs> like he never yeah. he oh, never yeah. puts oh. any production up. So here's here's the numbers. I'll I'll give them to you just so everybody knows what we're talking about. Grizzlies played 32 games. He has two goals, five assists, seven points, yeah. plus six. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has um, 37 shots on goal, 21 hits, 32 blocks. Um, four boards played in 22 games, four assists. He's plus 10, uh, 30 hits in. Uh, in 22 games, I said. Uh, Wallerspoon, 18 games, three assists, uh, three points, um, plus three. He has 29 hits. And um, wow. yeah, so uh, basically those guys are identical. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and Wallerspoon has played in four less games than four board. Four board's a plus 10. Wallerspoon's a plus three. How many uh, blocks does four board have? Four board has 30 blocks. In 22 games, Wallerspoon has 29 blocks in 18 games, so one less block in four less games. Right. Oh, so he's blocking that, shots. I didn't um, realize Grizzlick would block so many shots. Um. Well, Grizzlick, no, Grizzlick has uh 32 blocks, but in 32 yeah. games, so that's oh, okay. one game. Block a game. Yeah. yeah. Um. And then Shattenkirk, five goals, eight assists, 13 points, minus five. Uh, and he has uh, 48 blocks in mm-hmm. 39 games. Interesting that he's a minus five and the other like forwards are plus 10. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, I mean, he's played with uh, a bunch of guys who, you know, he was playing yeah. with Lorai at times when Lorai yeah. was bad earlier yeah. in the season. Yeah. Like, you know, right. he, gets, he gets, I mean, and like I said, he's, he hasn't been great. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like he has experience and he puts the puck in the net occasionally. He has 13 Yeah, points. I mean, I, I just think that Shattenkirk is probably as good as you're going to get, unless you can get a nasty guy that, that's really like a defensive defensively stout yeah. guy there. I think mm-hmm. that Shattenkirk is the type of guy that you got to go with there. I'm, I'm fine with that. It's just, you know, the Watherspoon thing. Right now, you you strike while the iron's hot. Like, you ride it. You ride it right now while he's playing pretty well. And you just keep it right there. Like, and Grizzly is going to have another, you know, it's going to be the same song and dance with Grizzly. And I like Grizzly a lot. Like I've always yeah. liked the guy mm-hmm. and he, and he typically has a high plus minus and all that like Jesus, but you know, in the playoffs, he doesn't and he gets beat up and they target him and they, you know, it becomes like, then he's, then he's kind of passing the puck too quickly and, and moving it like hot potato and, and then it becomes, he starts to go down the spiral a bit. And then you end up, you know, subbing him out anyway. And last year was Clifton, right? That went in for that one game and he was a friggin' disaster. Like, yeah. and then you start to re- just revolving door of third pair defensemen, which you really don't want to do. I mean, it's just, it, it becomes a weakness that shouldn't be when they're playing 12 minutes a game. Yeah. Like I mean, here's, be, here's you know, Grizzlick's uh, post seasons, 2017 minus two, 2018 minus three, 2019 minus five, 2020 minus two, 2021 minus six, 2022 minus one. Yeah. So minus, 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 minus yeah. when he's a career oh. plus guy, high plus guy. Yeah. So, so he's for a- six years, he's been minus every single year. Yeah. Um, in, in, you know, contrast, uh, here we go from for a regular season 2017 
plus 21, 18 plus 9, 19 plus 15, 20 plus 11, 21 plus 22, 22 plus 46. Yeah. 2023 plus six. So in in 2022, he was plus 46, and then he got into the playoffs, and he was minus one with mm. no points in four games. Yeah. So your third pair guy or whatever can't be that guy. Can't be giving up goals. Like can't be, can't be minus. Just can't nope. be. Be be even. Be <laughs> just exist for your 12 minutes. Um, so that yeah, I'm I'm with you on on your pairs. All right, uh, chirp number six, Patrice Bergeron. You're talking on uh shit and giggles or whatever it is, ch- it's spit and chitlets that uh that Bergeron was going to come back and then he's working out and then he's really working out higher end than just some guy working out for the alumni game and everything. Well, Bergeron comes back and says, Absolutely not, capital N O T, he's not coming back. And I am on and I am in the camp that says, Do not come back. I am with you. I am. I don't, I don't, I just don't think you should come back. No, I I think it's, I think it's to the point where, uh, you know, obviously great player and you love the guy and everybody loves him. St. Patrice, the whole ball of wax. But at this point, like he hasn't played in, in, you know, half a season or a full season. Now you're expecting him to come back in February and ramp up for the playoffs and, you know, at his age and, and now just let the guy enjoy his retirement. He gave everything that he possibly had to the Bruins, punctured lungs, you know, broken noses after broken nose after broken nose. Yeah, I mean, he's done all he could possibly do for this organization. Let the guy enjoy some time with his family and skate in an occasional alumni game and, and uh, you know, leave him be. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I just, I just think that, like you said, too much time off. Last year he wasn't great in the playoffs. Got injured again. There's always that risk of getting injured like one last time. Then you're really kicking yourself like a, mm-hmm. a bad injury. Now you can't walk right. You know, playing with your kids. Like I don't. I don't know. I just don't think. I yeah. I'd love to see him play again, but I just don't think. I just don't think it's going to be the same if, if he came back. I just. I just don't. And I just think right now I'm okay with him being done. I can, I can revel in his memory Mm -hmm. and I can think of him fondly and that's it. I just, I just don't want to risk being totally bullshit at him when he fucks it up in the (laughs) postseason. Like, I don't want to, I don't want a stain of any type. We already had a little stain last year that we're all kind of, I feel like we're all kind of letting go, like we're letting Mm -hmm. it go because he was hurt and he tried and we get it. We gave him a mulligan there, even Mm -hmm. though we probably should be more pissed about it and that he didn't play well at all. But okay, mm-hmm. we don't though because he's him. He's him. He's he. Th- yeah. He is who he is. Yeah. But I don't want to do that again. So I'm done. I'm done with yeah. him playing. That's it. Uh, all right, and also done with Joe Thornton playing. Chart number seven. Joe yep. Thornton will have his number nineteen retired by San Jose next season. Where does he rank in this era's players? I'm telling you, it should be higher than it is, just oh, yeah. because he was so friggin' sensational as a player. When you yeah. see the stats here on YouTube, like. 548 power play points like for god's sakes like, he was, like where the air Over is rare assists yeah, <clears throat> yeah. 1700 games played i mean yeah. I that's mean, a one goodness. hell of a career i mean the only t- the only stain the only tarnish is uh is no cup i mean is it fair like it's is it fair, fair? i no. mean really i mean if that's that's if that's anybody else who let's say he won a cup then he's up there you know, in like people are talking about him in the discussion for like, I don't know, top 20 player ever or something like he's Probably. up there. He's I mean, up they, there. tell you what, though, they do hold that stuff against you because when you talk about the greatest uh, quarterbacks of all time, Dan Marino's name, you know, right. it's, yeah. it's up there, but it's not where it should be probably because he didn't win. Right. You know, it's always they Montana. They go Montana first and then they go Elway and then they're like, oh, Marino. You know, but Marino didn't yeah. win one. So yeah, those other yeah. guys are ahead of him. Whether, you know, you think they yeah, should be or not, that's the way people look at it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. And he's, you know, like you said, 1,700 games, 1,539 points. 1,539 points, which is just like, 
I mean, it's it's just unbelievable. You know, he you was know a- unbelievable. You know what really is unbelievable is the impre- incredibly poor return that the Bruins got. And oh trip. my god, oh my god, <laughs> the wrong Primo and and somebody else who was it? Like it was, you know, Don Primo. I mean, who? who yeah, even knows? it was the Primo that sits at the kids' table at Thanksgiving. Yeah. It was that right. Primo. The wrong, the wrong yeah. Primo. Yeah, yeah, the wrong, the wrong primo. primo. I mean, and then look at the look at the playoffs, like. People tell about his his playoff thing, and he had some playoffs that were stinkers for sure. But Jesus, he still had, you know, with San Jose, he still had 90, he still had 115 points in 144 playoff games. Like, I mean, he's, <laughs> he still had some. He had one in, in 2015-16 where he had 21 points in 24 playoff games. Like, I mean, there you were some stinkers. But, yeah. I know, mean, he, wasn't a complete shutdown. No, you can't ask really for much more than that from your – from your superstar guys is if they're putting up close to a point a game in the playoffs, cause they're facing every team's best defenseman. They're, yeah. they're the other team's goal is to shut down Thornton. Uh, yeah. So, you know, he's going to see everybody's best. And if you're a superstar and you're putting up close to a point a game in the playoffs, you, you really can't ask for much more than that. It, you know, most people know in the playoff games, in the playoffs, it's the depth that makes a difference. It's the third yeah. and fourth lines versus, no, versus without a doubt. that, that, Side series, you know, yep. the Bruins third line and, and, you know, 10, 11 was. Yeah. What was it Ryder, Kelly, Peverly or. Yeah. Something I mean, that was like, instrumental in them yeah. winning series. Yeah. So I, that's what it comes down to. It's, it's the superstars usually will cancel each other out and it's how the, right. how the, how the others do play. you're right. You're absolutely right. And I, and I think that that's, you know, you know, Joe does get, you know, a lot of grief for that. And yeah, and there were some stinkers in there and there were some times I, I think in Boston, though, one of the problems that people have with him is that he was so big that there was this, you know, he's not physical enough thing. Right. That was sure. one. Yeah. And then Pat Burns would be on his ass like he was a young guy at 18, whatever, mm-hmm. as a top overall pick he was going to be the franchise guy they were bad like they were bad they had the number one and eight pick like yeah. they were bad they were so bad. i think if if he came in and had someone like like the other time they were bad it was in 06 when they had bergeron chara savard but joe didn't have really anybody else besides no. samsonoff like they yeah. had nobody else. No. So if he had a support system like a Chara, so if it was like 06 and he was entering with Chara or even Bergeron, mm-hmm. it would have been a much, I think it would have really benefited him. He was kind of on an island as the face of the franchise at 18, super talented, wasn't mm-hmm. physical enough. They were bad. And I think that that was part of the issue with him in Boston because you're right, the return was so friggin' bad. And yeah, he was so friggin' good. It's crazy. And the, yeah, I mean, he wins an MVP the year after they get rid of him. So that was right. cool. <laughs> right, right, right. right. He was like sensational. Yeah, like, he was. it was like an all time season. Yeah. Like he was just, and they were so good with Marlowe and him. Like they were so good. Yeah. And, and he was, and he was so good. And, and, you know, he deserves it. And it's too bad that, I would love for him to get some sort of recognition in Boston because mm-hmm. he was just such a great player. He's one of the greatest players ever to play for the Bruins. I mean, sure. you can say that you can say yeah. that. Yeah. Without a doubt. So uh, it's too bad. Big, big Joe gets his day uh, in San Jose next year at some time. His number 19 goes to the raft is so good for him. Uh, Draft King Sportsbook, Boston's hometown sport, sportsbook is li- right here in Massachusetts. Bet local and all your favorite sports from the comfort of your own home. With DraftKings, to celebrate, all new customers will receive up to $200 in bonus bets. When you sign up for DraftKings Sportsbook using the code ITR, you can now bet Local on money line spreads, props, and more with one of America's top-rated sportsbooks, DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, sign up with the code ITR to get up to $200 in bonus bets to use now that mobile sports betting is live in Massachusetts. That's code ITR only at DraftKings Sportsbook. If you're a loved one is experiencing problems with gambling, call 800-327-5050 or visit helplinema.org to speak with a trained specialist free and confidentially 24-7. 21 plus, physically present mass, eligibility restrictions apply, subject to regulatory licensing requirements, eligibility and deposit restrictions apply, opt-in required, bonus issues are free bets, terms at draftkings.com slash MA. All right, beauty for this week. 
mean, I feel like we have to do this guy every other week just to make up for the total ass reaming we gave him last year on the whip, whipping boys <laughs> segment. And uh, this this week, again, uh, the beauty is Trent Frederick. This will teach those filthy bastards who's lovable. <laughs> and, and, and I'm one of the filthy bastards because <laughs> I, I thought Trent couldn't play in the league yeah. last year. And here he is playing in the league. And uh, being a real intricate, integral part of what's going on in Boston. 13 goals, 12 assists, 25 points in 46 games, plus 14. And has showed a uh, tremendous touch. And he's uh, on track to score 20, 20 goals at least. And he's just been terrific. He has been. Uh, yeah. and, and pretty much anybody that you put on his line, like, breaks out of their slump. I, yes. I, I'm not yeah. sure what it is about him. Uh, and the way he plays, but whatever it is, uh, it rubs off on the guys around him. He's making his line mates better. How about the feed to Jacob Lauko? Oh, wow. All the other yeah. night. Oh, yeah. uh, just a, a great little short, like two foot pass. Uh, yeah. And Lauko gets to put it into an yeah. open net. So he's really playing really, really well. He's got a great shot. He's a big kid. Uh, he's learning how to use his body uh, to protect pucks and, and forecheck. And, um, you know, he's. He's really a guy that Bruins fans uh, are falling in love with if, if they haven't already. And and he's probably, uh, if he's not going to win it, he's certainly one of the front runners for the Summit Player Award. Uh, yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah, I mean, I think he'd I think he'd be my pick. I think he'll be the fans' pick. He's a fan favorite anyway, even sure. when he wasn't playing well. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's a Bruin type, I guess, type of player, or at least Bruins fans have wanted him to be that type of player. Yeah. But you're right, and you've been a fan of the two foot pass. You you're an advocate for two I foot love passes. It. I mean, you you are, and uh, it's true. Like you make those little tiny little passes to set up space, time and space, and yeah. And he made a great pass to Loco for sure. So Freddie's been terrific, and um, it's a great deal for them now. Jesus. I mean, a two year deal. Like we, we kind of scratched our head last year. Like, why would you give him two years? Like, you know, but they did give him two years and it's, it's a great deal. And it's a really affordable deal now for what he's bringing to the table. I mean, Jesus. absolutely. Um, all right. So Bender time. Yeah. The <laughs> vendors, uh, we got a, we got a couple, uh, there's been some stuff in the news. I don't okay. know if you noticed, yeah, uh, but first we're going to go, uh, with, uh, Philadelphia Flyers fans. I'm a bender. Um, so Cutter Gauthier decides that he doesn't want to play for the Philadelphia Flyers, and their fan base just absolutely loses their shit. Now, this is the same fan base that when Eric Lindros did the same exact right. thing. <laughs> right, right, right. right. Same um, thing. Yeah. They were perfectly fine with getting Lindros on their team at that point, but sure. when somebody does it to them, uh -huh. oh, they're vengeful. They don't yeah. like it. They don't yeah. like it at all. So they're, they're a bunch of them got in their cars and they drove from Philadelphia or, you know, from the swamps of New Jersey or from the gutters <laughs> of, you know, wherever they come out of. Yeah. Drive to Boston to uh, heckle Cutter Gauthier when he gets back in college from the from the World Juniors uh, after he was traded to Anaheim. And uh, he he they. They, it's just like grown men driving to heckle a 19 year old kid because he doesn't yeah. want to play for their team in their city. Just yeah. fucking grow up for crying out loud. Grow up. I mean, it's not impressive that the players have not wanted. I mean, the Mannings. Yeah. I mean, Eli Manning did this. I mean, sure. John Elway did this. Um, well, like, yeah. I mean, it, it's not impressive that people are avoiding teams. There's talk that Kayla Williams might try to avoid the Bears and stuff. Like, it, it happens. Like, it just happens. So I, you know, it, it's just one of those things. He decided for whatever reason, he didn't want to go play for Philadelphia. I don't know what it is. It's been kind of hush hush. There's been rumors about what it might be. And then of course it always turns into someone's banging someone's girlfriend and stuff. I don't know, but I, I don't think it's any of that. I just think that he said, you know what? I don't want to go. I don't want to go play for the flyers. I don't. So it just decided because the flyers haven't been good for a while. No, they haven't. You know, number one. So let's yeah, not they're act like playing well. they're, they're playing, playing, well, franchise. playing well now. Um, yeah, well, no. playing fine now. But I, I think it might have a lot to do with who the head coach of that team is. Oh yeah, I think it yeah, has a lot to do with that guy. Shit, you know? And uh, yeah, I mean, some some guys just don't like the style of a guy like Tortorella. And no. I, I mean, I don't have any problem with someone being. I like, like it. I mean, I'd yeah. love to play for Tortorella. Sure, you know, me I too. Would. 
But I can uh, you know, he's a fiery guy. He's going to get the most out of you. I, I think, and he certainly fits how, uh, you know, Philadelphians, is that, is that what that is? Yeah. So, the Philadelphiaites. Yeah, Philadelphians. Like that. yeah. That's certainly how they want their coach, uh, sure. and, you know, to represent the city. Yeah. But, He's, you know, not everybody likes that style. So if he's like, you know, that's not a fit for me, you know, who, who's to say that that's a bad decision, really? I mean, right. they, they feel scorned. They feel they feel let down. But and and fine. You want to yell into the fucking Twitterverse, you know, fuck him or whatever. Do it. But to drive like, I know, it. you know, a few hours to heckle him at a hockey game. I, I mean, be, it's, be, it's, it's co- at a college game, not even a pro a game. game. Right. That I mean, means nothing to them. Really? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's, that's unbelievable. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable. I mean, just yeah. the cost alone to go, to go, to go yell, yell different words, right. different dirty words. At yeah. Gautier. You are good yeah. enough for my yeah. city. Oh, great. great. Super. Uh, uh, Super. You know what else isn't good enough is no. the, the NHL. <laughs> Uh, and Canadian hockey's handling of the 2018 um, alleged sexual assault and uh, kind of the cover-up that happened. So uh, the NHL will be the other bender. Out of 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 bender. Yeah, they deserve it. There you go. There's five of them. Yeah, there's five of them. All Uh, five of them. um, Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's a real tough look for Canadian hockey and the nhl to let uh these guys go on playing um through and covering up what you know was an alleged incident uh they were just all recently let go with a leave of absence from their particular teams uh throughout the nhl and one uh in europe but uh yeah just a just a terrible uh bungling really of the whole thing and I don't really understand how the league and Canadian hockey can let this go for this many years without some kind of, um, you know, discipline or inquiry or something, anything anyway. uh, is, is better than how they handled it. I mean, it's six years in the making now. I mean, it's it's really it's really tough look. And then Carter Hart's probably the highest profile guy that's probably going to be involved in this. I mean, there hasn't been any proof of it yet, but he was definitely one of the people who were given a leave of absence uh, in this situation. And rumors that the Flyers are trying to trade him during the off season prior to this season because he may be involved in it. And I don't know the the direct result of it, or and no one does, or what exactly happened uh yeah, but it's, all not come good. Out. it's not good it's all going to come out by london police on february 5th in a press conference um it happens to be right after all-star weekend which is a convenient timing mm-hmm. and then of course once it's once this at this this story comes out just recently um Utah, Salt Lake City decides that they're going to announce their 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 uh, intent to expand <laughs> into yeah. Salt Lake City with the NHL right after it. So try to throw a curveball, a little bit of a you know misdirection at it, to get people's attention on that rather than on this. And that was poor timing too. And that that seemed to be pretty deliberate. So it, the whole thing is just reeks of we don't take it that seriously. And it's, uh, you know, and they're kind of making a mockery of it. And it just puts a real poor taste into into your mouth. And and I think that you're going to see if these guys are involved, I think you're going to see these guys banned at least for a year and potentially never being allowed back into the league. Yeah, I think they'll be banned. And I, and I don't know if it would be like a, a league wide thing where they would be blackballed permanently, but I just don't think teams would touch them. I mean, no. There's a reason why the alleged, uh, I don't know, he's not the co-conspirator, but the lead conspirator in this whole thing is already playing in Europe. It's because no wow. team over here would touch the guy. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's just, um, it's a terrible look it throughout is. all levels it of is. hockey in Canada and the NHL. And the people that covered it up within Team Canada, 
uh, really need to be held accountable to. It can't just be these guys. I mean, obviously, these guys should be held accountable and, and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But um, those people that are covering things up really need to take a hard look at themselves and, and face some serious discipline for this, too, because you can't be doing something like that and and get away with it. It just it, that's not the way it should be. No. So this is going to be interesting on February 5th, what the actual uh, statement is from the London police. And, and we'll see for sure what happens then. But I think that you're going to see, you know, all of these players uh, probably be exiled from the league and for a long, long time, if not ever. And, um, you know, it's just not a great look. It's just none of it. None of it is good for the league and in a league that is really dealt with a lot of, um, you know, poor decision making and and uh, you know, bad headlines and and all those things for a while now, and it's just another one where they're going to have to try to repair their image, and it's mm-hmm. uh, it's it's unfortunate. All right, Centennial season spotlight continues, and we're going to focus on one Cam Neely. Cameron Neely was uh, obviously. A terrific Bruin, one of the best of all time. Injuries cut short his career, but in 726 games, he had 694 points, 395 goals, 299 assists, and he was a great playoff performer as well. Never won a cup with the Bruins or went to two cup finals. 89 points in 93 uh, playoff games, including 57 goals in 93 playoff games. For Cam, he had 17 hat tricks in his career and was the prototypical power forward. Yeah, I think that he was the one that they coined the term after, right? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was the the original, the, the, the OG original power forward. Yeah, the OG, the OG. The OG power and he was, and he had this at the end of his career as we were in you know, high school and going into mm-hmm. early college. Like he, he would score like literally every game. And he, he didn't play every game, but when he got back into the line, it was uncanny. He would take nights off and then he would not play back to backs for a while because of his injuries. But then he would go in the lineup and score at least a goal like every single time. It was unbelievable. Well, he, had the, he, he had the 50 and 44, right? Yeah, 50 and 44 against the Capitals. It was a hat trick. Yeah. We were at, I was at the game. Yeah. It was a hat trick to score his 50th in 44 games. And that was at a time where he wasn't playing every game. Right. And and he would just come in and just score goals. And he yeah. was and he had, you know, Craig Janney was an excellent playmaker. And of course, Adam right. Oates was one of the greatest of all time. So that mm-hmm. certainly helped. But he had incredible accuracy with the shot. And he also had some real skill with the puck. Great hand eye coordination. Oh. Like he had really good skill, too. And, and he could tip pucks and he could, you know, pick pick corners and all that type of stuff. Had a great shot like he had in, in the slide. Talk about. You talk about bumper position with Bergeron in the yeah. slot. Nearly was like, he was like Brett Hall. He was, it was like automatic. Yeah. He was the from there. There. And he so could beat the living great. bag out of you too. He could, he could just <laughs> knock <laughs> you nuts in the next week. Yeah. yeah I mean, if you look at him the wrong yeah. way, he was going to yeah. beat the living bag out oh of you. Oh my God. He, he would get really angry. You think he's angry on the ninth floor. <laughs> the was loose. He was yeah. really angry yeah. on the ice. You go back yeah. and watch some YouTube highlights of oh uh, on hockey fights and, and oh, some yeah. other things. If you want to see, uh, See oh, a yeah. guy with uh, some blood running through his veins, some anger. I mean, he had a he had a fight with. I mean, it was maybe it was Rick Tockett or someone that was just like a bloodbath. Yeah, uh, of course he was after Alf Samuelson. One time he grabbed sure. him uh, after Alf tried to injure him for his, you know, and it really ended his career eventually. Yeah, uh, and he and he, I thought he was going to kill him. I really mm-hmm. thought he was going to kill him on the ice uh, that that night. And uh, but he was such a gifted player too. And and uh, talk about, I mean, he was traded for Barry Peterson. Mm-hmm. Bruins also got the pick that got Wesley, right? Is that what it was? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I think it was a pick that got Wesley too. So that was a great trade for Boston. Even though Barry Peterson was a really great player, he was. Uh, but he he ended he up being heaven. Yeah, he had he had most of his great years with Boston. But uh, but that trade with Vancouver was a great one. Great foresight by Harry Sinden and everyone. And and now Neely's a team president and has been a lifelong Bruin and just one of the really great players. Uh, in Bruins history for sure. And if he played longer, he would be probably up there with or as he would certainly be the greatest forward probably ever. I mean, he would have probably passed Espo and Busick and all them if he had been healthy. 
and yeah, not probably. a big banging forward that he that he was. But and you know what? It when people talk about like a Milan Lucic, like if he, you know, why doesn't he hit every night? Why doesn't he do this and that? And and that's the result is Cam Neely when you when you go out and hit every night for 82 games and through the playoffs and it shortens your career. Like, sure. so you have to make that decision. Are you going to do that every night or are you going to try to get through uh, and play more, more seasons? But mm-hmm. uh, Providence Bruins beauty of the week is Anthony Richard, 15 goals, 18 assists, 33 points. He's a 27 year old, but he was a fourth round pick in the 2015 draft as the Bruins have continued to accumulate 2015 <laughs> draft picks. And uh, Anthony has been on uh, a little bit of a tear, a little bit of a heater lately. And he's a good player. Uh, you know, he's a good AHL player, uh, does have some speed and skill and, and an ability to score goals. He's doing it this year. And he's a second point, uh, uh, second point getter on the team behind Mikulov. And he's had a really good year for them. Yeah, he's a he's a good player and he's a nice little add to to the team. I think he's probably a four A guy. He does have probably NHL speed. I don't know if he has uh, other NHL attributes, but uh, he certainly um, gives you know Providence a, a really good forward and and Bruins some depth if they if they get in a bind. But uh, yeah, a, a really good player and he's and he's having a really good year for Providence. Yeah, he is. And and he's a good, you know, he's a good age. Like you say, he's a good AHL kind of veteran guy that you plug in on your AHL team to, to produce points and play all season. And, you know, like Justin Brezzo, they have a couple of those guys, yeah, they have, probably a four, eight guys. And, you know, they score goals. I think they're good role models too, for some of the younger guys yeah. they have, you know, kind of doing things the right way and going about things the right way and, and producing at that level. So good for him. No question. And then prospect spotlight is one Chris Pelosi who was picked in the 2023 draft by the Bruins. They had to pick further down the draft because of trading away their picks, but Chris has been terrific. 16 goals and 20 assists and 32 games played. He's a plus 34 uh, and he's going to Quinnipiac next season. He looks to be a late round find for the Bruins. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good find for the Bruins and, and hopefully he'll go to Quinnipiac and continue to produce. That's a really good team they have there. They won the national title. Uh, I don't know if it was last year or the year before that. So, um, you know, a really good squad there and, and hopefully he can develop more and, and come to the Bruins and, and, uh, give them a boost. Yeah. Uh, playing with you know. Beckett, Beckett Hendrickson as well. Another, pick. yeah. So they, uh, it, it, it's nice to see some of these later round picks, uh, hitting for the Bruins cause they need that, you know, uh, they do. They need to hit. That they, you know, they don't have a lot of of high picks. Um, you know, they pick usually later in the first round too, because of you know the fact that they've been good for so long, and and uh, so uh, in trading the picks away, so they need to hit on some of these, you know, third, fourth, fifth round picks uh, in order to um, you know get some people into the prospect system and the pipeline there. Here's a question. Here's a guy I'm just going to throw out there. Is, is Brett Harrison in the witness protection program? What's he been doing lately? I haven't yeah, heard I think he's lick. really struggled in Providence. Yeah. Uh, he did have a little bit of a hot streak, I believe, like a few weeks ago where he's starting to turn it on a little bit. But yeah, overall, like I don't know if his skating is good enough for the NHL level. I think he has an NHL shot. Um, but if you can't skate and get to the areas where you need to shoot from, yeah, uh, it's going to be tough to score goals. You know, if, if everyone yeah, else is true. in the offensive zone and you're still in the neutral zone because you can't get there, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's the problem. Yeah, typically they saying, don't I'm wait not, for you. I'm yeah. not saying he's that bad because I, yeah. I haven't watched a lot of Providence Bruins. Um, right. But the the knock on him is his, is his skating. So unless he really improves that, I think, mm. you know, he's probably going to be a career AHL guy or ECHL guy, you know when the, when the time comes to, uh, you know, that's, that's what his ceiling probably is. Well, that, that we've seen that with Trent Frederick, like he improved his skating yeah, because he wasn't a very good skater. Uh, but he wasn't, I mean, he's a, he's always been like a third line guy. Like he's, he hasn't had the expectation to be like Harrison needs to be a top six player. You know, this is the same thing as Jack Stanika to me. Like he's a pro, he fits the profile of top six forward. He's not a guy you're going to put in on like the bottom two lines because he's just not that type of player. 
Yeah, so bring I mean, that value. that's that's the thing though. Like about both of those guys is like, was there anything like I said NHL shot with Harrison? I'm not yeah, sure he has. not Yeah, is there yeah. something elite you do? Right. Yeah. Said this do all you have that. an elite yeah. skill? Right. Stanika didn't have any elite skills. He was no, he pretty didn't. good at yeah. everything, but that gets yeah. you to the AHL level and it, it gets you a right. cup of coffee in the NHL yeah. and then you get you traded and then it gets you right. sent down right. and, and then you play right. in Europe somewhere. Yeah. So that's what right. it gets you. So right. you can be pretty good and, and have a pro career. It just won't be in the NHL, right. which is fine. Yeah. fine. And that's yeah, probably fine. what Harrison's going to be. You know, I don't know if his shot is an elite shot or just a very good shot. But like I said, if you can't do anything else, at least pretty good, then you're you're not gonna get a you're not gonna get a shot in the NHL. That's for no. it's for elite talent. Right. And you're right. And this year he has three goals, five assists in twenty three games. Yeah. I mean um, and even in the OHL, like he had a season where he had twenty seven goals, he had sixteen goals, he had eighteen goals. He's not putting up like Lysel numbers right. like WHL or or numbers that are off the charts, it's kind of goal scoring wise. So, yeah, I think I think you might see him being a career four H four H four A goal. I mean, guy. he's not yeah. even doing that well in the AHL. So if they he's not. if no. the Bruins get some guys that can that are you know get Christopher Pelosi's of the world to come in there and or you know other undrafted free agents or whatever that yeah that are that are better off. Right. Dan's uh, Luck Mellis. So, yeah, yeah Luck guys. Mellis. I yeah. mean, there's some yeah. guys, you know, Riley Duran, whatever it is. Yeah. There's some guys there that could be coming into the pipeline in right. the next couple of years here that could knock his ass back to, you know, the Savannah Swamp Rabbit. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Bloomington Bisons. What is, is that the new team, Connor? The Bloomington Bisons in the ECHL? That is correct. The Bloomington yeah. Bison. And the just Dubuque. to clarify, it is yeah. the uh, Greenville Swamp Rabbits. Yeah, I went with Savannah for the alliteration. They have a team, though, don't they? Savannah, Savannah Ghost Pirates. Yes. Oh, here you go. Boom. Oh, can you move the team to Savannah? I mean, please. I mean, Dubu Dubuque Dingbats? What it was it? <laughs> what was it? Whoa, Jesus. No, yeah, so, uh, we'll be with one of them. Swamp Pirates, wasn't it? The swamp, swamp Pirates. <laughs> no, Ghost Pirates. Swamp Rat. <laughs> Are there pirates in the swamp? <laughs> like, I don't even get it. That was my know, fault. That was it. my fault. It's the Ghost <laughs> yeah. Pirates and the Swamp Rabbits. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So he's one, he'll, he'll be on one of those. I don't want to offend any of you. know what? We'll let his he's agent dead, figure that out. Yeah. I don't know who the hell that is. So yeah. uh, hopefully he does well. Um, all right, week ahead for the Boston Bruins uh, tonight, Wednesday night, at home against the Carolina Hurricanes, and then on uh, January 27th, on Saturday night, at Philadelphia before the All-Star break, we'll all have 10 days off from Bruins hockey. Wow, that's a big, that's a big... Uh, I think February 6th, get back at it. It's a big break there for the, for the Bees after the. So you know you'd look you'd look for them to try to finish strong here. Two sure. tough opponents though. I'll tell you, Carolina's playing really well lately. Yep. Kind of found good. themselves after a. And really they've had the Bruins number in the past. Yeah. They have. Uh, so yep. that's that. That'll be a tough matchup for them. And then Philadelphia is playing really well. They're in playoff position. They play extremely hard under Tortorella. Um, I don't know if you saw some of the goals that Owen Tippett scored the other night. He scored yeah. a Dennis mm -hmm. Savard special, a little spinorama mm -hmm. back in roof job yeah. the other night. That was beautiful. So they're playing really well. So it's going to be a couple of really tough games here for the Bruins in the next few. But, you know, you'd really like to see them kind of end on a high note here before the before the All-Star break. So I don't they know. They can ride in. They can ride right in with a seven game win streak. They could. They, they could ride right in with it. Yeah. Let's get go win streaking. Tonight, get win in Philly, streaking. Get win in three. We'll go streaking, honey. Yeah. Right. Seven game streak. Let's let's try it. Let's try it for let's shits and giggles. Yeah. Just um, a tip. See how just it feels. a tip. Just see how it feels. You're a big fan of roof jobs. All right. <laughs> go to insidetherink.com for Bruins Benders merchandise. Shirts, hut, hoodies, hats, mugs, stickers, coasters, all sorts of stuff. You can hit the QR code right there on YouTube to get right to our merchandise site. Uh, and pick up some of that good stuff. Follow us on social media at Bruins Benders. We do game updates on X. 
during the games. We get a lot of interaction and engagement. Go ahead and do it with us at Bruins Benders. And then, of course, you can purchase your NHL hockey tickets on Ticketmaster using our QR code right through InsideTheRink.com and support our show via Ticketmaster. Get some tickets. I'm going to look for some. We're actually going to go, or I'm going to try to go with you guys to the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning Colorado Avalanche game in February. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Ticket. Yeah, that'd be good to see two other teams, two other good teams yeah. in another in another venue. Yeah, another uh, to see how the other the other half lives. Cool. Yeah, we'll be down there in Tampa for that one. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it, absolutely. So go ahead and subscribe to Inside the Rink uh, Inside the Rink on the YouTube page as well, and view our content. Thanks so much for listening, and go Bruins! Thanks a lot. Bye bye.